one 500 million pound nuclear powered submarine. Stealthy, silent, and deadly. Stop by the fire. Fire! Five elite submariners hungry for command. And one no nonsense examiner known as a teacher. Come on! You need to get this sus now. And if you think that's good enough, I will start taking charge. This is the world's toughest command course. All right, raise the attack. I am not convinced that you guys have actually grasped that. They call it the Perisher. Attack. Attack. Ship control. Contact is continued to charge. Made... If they succeed, these young officers will go on to command one of the world's most lethal military machines. But if they fail, their underwater careers will be over. You haven't seen nothing yet. Trust me. Nuclear-powered submarines, the world's most formidable military assets. Some entrusted with carrying devastatingly powerful nuclear deterrents. Others deciding conflicts by more conventional means. All stealthy and unseen, policing and gathering vital intelligence in waters all over the world. In their early days, the British Admiralty regarded the use of submarines as underhand, unfair, and damned un-English. But when they saw how effective they could be, they changed their minds. Today, long-range weapons and advanced technology make submarines an even deadlier foe. Commanding a sub is one of the most prized jobs in the Navy. But first, you must pass the Perisher course. And for the first time in 30 years, the hatches have been opened, allowing us in to experience this grueling process in a very secret world. Faslane Naval Base on the west coast of Scotland. The long journey to submarine command starts here. In a porter cabin. One sweep, one contact, visual type 42. The students are approaching the end of three months simulator training. Crew, equipment and systems match those of the real Trafalgar class submarine they will shortly be tested on for a month at sea. I'd rather you make your mistakes now, okay, and learn from them. All right, as we get closer and closer and closer to going to sea, you've got to start honing these skills individually and collectively to make sure that that boat, in fact, your boat, when you are duty captain, remains safe at all times. Fully understood? Commander Jim Perks is the Perisher course teacher. He spent 20 years of his life beneath the waves and received royal honours for his command. Start coming right just before you encounter it and then just start nudging. It's not an easy course to pass. I have a, a fantastic responsibility and I'm the guy that says at the end of the day whether they've passed or failed. Jim's been taking his charges through every possible scenario they could face at sea. New course would be 270, reducing four knots and returning to press scope deck. From covert surveillance to all out warfare. Stand by to fire, track 33, classified kilo. As well as teaching the processes of commanding a submarine, he's trying to develop their mental agility, situational awareness, and command presence. What is the worst case scenario? Right, stand room, control room. I'm trying to engage some priority contacts here. There's one hell of a lot to juggle commanding a 5,000 ton tin can under the waves. Weapon system ready. Fire. Very sovereign. The students all have distinguished submarine careers behind them. 32-year-old David Filtness, known as Filthy, is confident his long-term ambition to command is within reach. Perisher has, has been pretty much the thing that, that, that I've worked towards since joining submarines. As a warfare officer, the goal as a submariner is to pass the submarine command course. All positions coming left now. Port 25. Jeff Fillmore from Northern Ireland seems less certain of his chances. If I do not pass the course, um, 
It'll not be a, because of lack of effort, and it'll certainly not be because of lack of experience. I would just perhaps turn around and say it's not something that I'm able to do necessarily. The options thereafter, we'll not dwell on that too much. <laughs> Our objectives, as always, are to remain safe, remain undetective, and, uh, and achieve our mission. Gareth Wragg, oily to his shipmates, is the youngest on the course and feels he has the most to prove. It's, it's important that I succeed. Uh, people have, uh, have supported my application to come on Berkshire and have, uh, have recommended me. I'd be letting them down if I, if I failed the course. Um, and also that would be the end of my submarine career. Range 4,300 yards, speed is zero. That is the target, continue the attack. Weapon system ready, fire. Unflappable Dan Martin already has the classic air of command, but he's taking nothing for granted. There is a high failure rate. Whatever happens, pass or fail, I would have given it my best shot. I would never leave the course. You know, It's going to have to be teacher to tell me to get off rather than uh, walk away. Such is the reputation of Perisher, even the United States Navy put their finest through it. Sugar Troll, half ahead, Revolution's one six. Dan Reese, who has a background in nuclear engineering, is the latest. He faces the additional challenge of relearning everything the British way. So I'm confident that when you come out on the other side, that if uh, I'm able to pass the course, that um, I'll be a better commanding officer, and more importantly, I'll understand more about myself. And this is what each of the students will be taking command of. HMS Triumph is a nuclear-powered hunter-killer, armed with a devastating array of missiles and torpedoes, capable of sinking ships and striking land targets up to 1,600 kilometers away. She's fitted with the latest navigation and sonar equipment, and crewed by 130 of the Navy's finest. Exo Captain, dive the submarine. This submarine is capable of circumnavigating the globe without surfacing. Open number one and two main vents. At sea since 1991, Three she's just had a 250 million pound refit. Her commanding officer, Rob Dunn, has been putting boat and crew through their paces before he steps back and hands over control to Jim and his perisher students. We'll be operating in tight navigational waters, in close proximity to other warships, and of course the natural hazards that weather and navigation bring. Uh, so we need to make sure that we're uh, absolutely in tip-top condition for this. It'll be quite a challenge for the crew, the fact that uh, there are five different commanding officers every time they'll walk into the control room. 20 meters. Theory complete. It's finally time for the students to leave the simulator and take turns commanding a real nuclear-powered submarine. There comes a time where they can't do any more, uh, and neither can I, and it's time to let them go. The next four weeks will be the most testing of their careers. Ten minutes time we were stepping on board and that's it. That's the start of it. Last phone call home now. Wife just finished work, so that was nice. That's really good. And now it's just um, get our game heads on. Slightly nervous, um, apprehensive, but um, sort of quietly confident. Ready to go. It's been waiting for this for months and months, and uh, ready to go. They'll be taking triumph into dangerous battle scenarios. And the lives of 130 crew will be in their hands. Each one of them, no matter how good they think they are now, will have a bad day. Hello, sir. How you doing? I did say so. Enjoying myself. Service number, sir, please. The five Perisher students have arrived on board HMS Triumph. Reese, R E I S S. 17164613, US Navy. Correct. Observe you like to follow left hand mark. From this moment, they're on trial. Hello, sir. Fillmore. And they all know they could fail the course at any time. That's it, that's it, absolutely. Brilliant, sir. Thanks very much. 
Commander Rob Dunn welcomes them with a polite request. People have probably said, told you uh, to drive the submarine like you stole it. Um, I would just put a slight caution on that. I would like you to drive the submarine as if it was yours. Over the next four weeks, the students will be spending most of their time in the control room, located directly beneath the fin on the upper deck. Think of it as a human head. With two periscopes for eyes. Sonar for ears. And a commanding officer for brains. A team of three controls the rudder, propulsor, and the ballast tanks that are used to submerge and surface the submarine. While the students work with a covert attack periscope, teacher Jim Perks will be able to see what they see through a second search periscope. Furious scribbling in his little yellow book will become a sure sign of trouble for the student concerned. The parachute course is made up of a number of key exercises to test the student's skills in a variety of operational scenarios. The first four days are devoted to mastering the use of the periscope and diving the submarine in close proximity to hostile warships. Range on the 40, that! 18 minutes, red 7-5! 2,200 yards, sir! One minute! Right hand, range for me, range attack! It's called eyes only because the students must use only the periscope and the stopwatch to calculate the distance and speed of their opponents. They have to be ready to instantly dive the submarine if a ship comes dangerously close. We have a range where we're not happy for that uh, frigate to come in doing the speed he's doing. And as soon as he encroaches at them, we'll take the submarine deep to a, a safe depth, allow the warship to pass over the top of us and then come back up. Revolutions 5 0, there, 10 down, keep 30 meters. Midships the rudder, lower all The surface ships make a series of runs towards triumph. For the trainee submarine captains, it's a game of Russian roulette. They never know when the ship may turn and charge them. If they dive too soon, they've failed the test. But leaving it too late could be catastrophic. The danger of collision is very real. Range on the 40, that! So eyes only requires intense focus, mental agility and precise communication skills. To test the students to the limit, Jim has lined up a formidable opponent. HMS Monmouth is a Type 23 frigate, purpose-built to seek out and destroy submarines. Have you got him? It's about uh, red, 3-0 now. There he is. With two huge jet turbine engines powering her 5,000 tons to an incredible 30 knots, she's not a vessel to get in the way of. Thanks to her sophisticated sonar systems, she's not easy to hide from either. I would class ourselves as pretty much undefeatable uh, and certainly a nightmare for, for submariners. That said, we're going against some of the best trained submariners in the world as well. So I don't exactly sleep comfortable when I know the submarines in the area. In this close quarters exercise, it's the crew's eyes that will be working the hardest. Normally, working in close proximity with surface units, you'd only have one of the masts, uh, probably the attack mast raised. But you'd only see the, the very top of it, uh, which would be painted dark green and be about the size of a Coke can. Over 100 years, that's been the benefit of submarines, is that even, even when you're quite certain that there's one close, it's almost impossible to detect. We're ready to start the run, if you want to tell him. How far this is, X-ray, over. Ready to start the run. Put it, start the run, start the run. Filthy left the simulator, confident about eyes only. But now he's got to test his maths against a real 5,000 ton warship. That B GCSE is going to be uh, worked hard this morning. Uh, range is 8,300 yards. Okay, with well, these ranges, doesn't make sense, does it? No. Range, back 16 minutes. Red Bad range, four. range again. 1,700 yards. No, come on. He's struggling with a barrage of split-second mental arithmetic. 6,000 
has no right ahead. No. You've got a real warship charging at you, 130 men in, in a nuclear submarine. Of course, it's, um, it's very different. But it's important that you get this range in sorted. For American Dan, still getting used to British Navy methods and language, everything's unfamiliar. 15 minutes, 3-3. Three, three. That's 2,200 yards. Look is. But he tries to hide any uncertainty with confident commands. Yeah. Range speed, 23. Wait a sec. Range minus go deep range divided by his overall speed for the area he's in. And then call the number out. It's easy. Dan must continuously calculate the range of the Monmouth. The periscope tells him the angle between the surface and a marker on the ship. He knows Monmouth's main gun is 40 feet above the waterline. From these two numbers, he can use simple trigonometry to calculate the range. By tracking the range, he can work out Monmouth's speed. And from that, how many minutes or seconds he has from a must-dive, go-deep situation. Uh, we've seen from a few runs a bit of panic um, getting in there uh, as they increase speed also. So uh, pressure's starting to build now. And the pressure's definitely starting to show on Jeff's face. Five seconds. 1800 yards. 2,100 yards, 45 seconds. 2,100 yards, 50 seconds. Certainly one of my greatest weakest points. I tend to work at 110 percent all the time when I'm on a periscope. One of my challenges is to slow down. One minute, 30 seconds. Okay, this is going to go for a range to me, right hand. Right hand, range to me, right tack. But Jeff's desire to slow down looks set to be thwarted. Alpha, this is X-ray over. So the next run is uh, run 13. Uh, we'll be altering round to line up for that one soon. It's a 23 knot run. The aim of this exercise is to put the submarine deep. Jim's asked the Monmouth to speed up and maneuver more aggressively. X-ray, this is Alpha, over. Ready to start the run. A faster ship gives Jeff even less time to calculate his ranges. And extreme maneuvers mess up the maths. They are now at speed. So if you can see all his flight deck, which you can, then he's healing right over, obviously. OK? You need to compensate for that. But on the 18. The warship, when it turns, it doesn't turn flat in the water. It turns on its side. And when it turns on the side, it changes the dynamics of how you look at it and the measurements of what you use to, to range how far away it is. Of all the parishers, youngest student, Oily, feels he is the most ground to make up. Range that. 20 minutes. Range is 2,000 yards. Looking to lose 45 seconds. You're over-ranging. Five Come. seconds. Work. Shallow. 10 seconds. Number by. Range for me, 23. Race tag. Red, 143. Range is 2,300 yards. I mean, eyes only for me is the, uh, the bit that, I'm, that I've struggled with through it in the trainer and, uh, and, and still I'm struggling with. Seven minutes. Hey, range is 1,700 yards. Bad range. It's, it's, it's a thinking man's game. It, 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 I, I need to manoeuvre this, this submarine to achieve an aim. Um, and uh, the, the way that I do that is by keeping it safe and also looking as far ahead as I can. This is, uh, this is ultimately what the course is all about. Range that. 28 minutes, green two three. Range is 1800 yards, looking for this. Uh, 30 seconds, that last all I looked was my milestone. But Oily's got his sums wrong. The frigates got dangerously close. Jim has to step in and dive the submarine to safety. The, the, the warship got to 1,100 yards. They shouldn't wait until they get the edge of the go-deep circle. They need to get in a way and look in and, and, and prepare themselves to go deep. Let everyone know it's going to happen. And that didn't happen there, and that's why I queued him. It's not enough of a mistake to fail the course right now. But if Oily puts the submarine in danger again, he could be heading home. Range is 3,300 yards. Day one over. It's time for Jim to pass on his initial impressions. OK, so uh, the early runs, I think, was 
probably a little bit of a shock with regards to ranging. A lot of you have been making the same mistakes. Tomorrow, beware. You haven't seen nothing yet. Trust me. Day two. And just as the students have started to get their heads around the exercise, Jim's going to make it even more complicated. He's called in a second Type 23 frigate, HMS Sutherland, to join the Monmouth for today's Eyes Only Runs. In the trainer, they could easily cope with two ships. At sea, it's completely different, uh, and they're finding that out today. Uh, the, the pressure is very much on. So now the students must constantly range two warships. On any run, they don't know whether both will safely pass them by. Or, at any time, either one could charge and force them to dive. And there's yet another factor to contend with. Bad weather and poor visibility makes ranging more difficult. Lots of rain squalls coming in, visibility reducing during the runs to sometimes 2,000 yards. English Dan's got to prove that as well as looking and sounding the part, he can deliver good command. 700 uh, yards, uh, looking to ball gears, uh, one minute and 30 seconds. You, you're very aware that, uh, you know, when you stand in that control room and you're in the centre, everyone is looking at you. 2,200 yards, 50 seconds, right hand, range for me, range attack. 361. Seems to be a fog, struggling to see the 40. Bad range. Can't, can't see anything through this now. 2,100 yards, uh, 1 minute and 6 seconds, left hand race. No, not in that sector. To see the sort of ship turn towards you and you're looking at the bow and the bow wave and she's doing, I think, just under 30 knots. Uh, you know, big frigate, big bow wave coming towards you. And you have to have the confidence then when you look at it to put the mast down. Trust your stopwatch and your maths. We will skirt 1,800 yards on the port side of the submarine. Uh, Yankee will pass 2,600 yards on the starboard side of the submarine. 3,000 yards. Ourselves and HMS Sutherland are, are liaising via radio, and we're keeping the submarine under as much pressure as we can. <laughs> Quick. Better. Stop the run. Under intense pressure, Dan's kept his cool and managed to fight his way through. Just a bit more, I'd have been all right, yeah. I, I struggled with some of the ranging. I had some pretty poor visibility, so I was having to work uh, quite hard at that, actually. Stop the run. Okay, two contact visual, both warships. After a poor performance on day one of eyes only, the man really under scrutiny today is oily. Range is 2,500 yards. No. But Jim feels he needs to build some confidence before piling on the pressure again. OK, we'll get your confidence back up. You know what you need to do. You're in the right frame of mind to do it. And when he can, he can do it. You've got to prove to himself that he can do it. Okay, stand by. Range speed at right hand. Range tag. Degree 70. Range is 2,000 yards. No, not in that sector. OK, range is 1,600 yards. Looking for his uh, 25 seconds. Oily is still struggling. And ATV check ball. Stop by ATV check. Stop by. Stop the run. Okay, that was scrappy. So Jim orders him to take an extra run. This could be his last chance to prove that he can do it. Okay, two warships, both type 23s. My right hand is the uh, closest contact, 30 starboard range of 6,000 yards. Left hand is uh, right ahead uh, at a range of 8,000 yards. Stand by. It's a nice start. Yeah. Keep it going. Range that. 12 minutes, red one, two. Okay, range is uh, 3,600 yards. Looking for this uh, woman. The ships are straight ahead to his left and right. With the bearings marked red for port and green for starboard. Starboard, rest for me, right, uh, right hand. Room sir. 90 minutes, green for six. Range is 2,100 yards. Looking for this uh, 45 seconds. Stand by. Okay, range is 1,600 yards. Increase your work rate now. Right, you still got a decent range on the right hand, have you? And now the left hand's riding close. Okay, left hand has stick to uh, starboard. Range, that. 17 minutes, green, 138. Okay, range is 2,300 yards. Looking for this, uh, 1 minute and 30 seconds. Good. Okay, stand by, ATV check, left hand for one, all round, four, all round, look. Three. Stop the run. You're ranging much, much better. 
that run was still quite scrappy, but um, we fought all the way through and, uh, and teachers didn't have to cue me, so it's, that's always a winner. Good ranging, good ranging. Oily's finally come good and kept himself in the running. Jim might just make a captain of him after all. But a looming emergency could be about to put the whole course in jeopardy. If the students survive the perisher course, they will be qualified to take on the huge responsibility of commanding a nuclear-powered submarine. HMS Triumph's two main turbine engines are powered by a nuclear reactor the size of a barrel of beer. The reactor creates high-pressure steam that turns the turbines, that drive the propulsor, that propels the submarine through the water. The same turbines that power the submarine also generate electricity, which can be used to create oxygen and fresh water vital to human survival. So a submarine is an entirely self-sufficient cruiser of the deep. There's only one thing that limits its ability to stay out on patrol indefinitely. Food. Head chef Pete Anderson is responsible for providing a varied diet for the 130 on board. Whenever Triumph sets sail, he has to have enough food on board to keep the submariners fed, fit and happy. But that can be quite a challenge in such limited space. Obviously we use up the most perishable goods first, then we go into tinned, then we go into frozen. The longer a trip that we go on, the more food we're gonna to get through. The Triumph's dry and frozen stores hold enough food for 90 days. What Peter and his crew cook up with it can make or break a submarine's tour of duty. So he's a very important member of the crew. It's the major morale booster. If you do put a bad meal out, the lads don't feel very good about the day. They don't, they don't perform well. If you give them a good meal, give them the best treats and the best food, they'll obviously perform a lot better and start their days on in a much happier state. Out at sea, the tiny galley is busy around the clock. We have a curry every Wednesday night. Saturday is always a steak night. Uh, Sunday is always pizza night. Generally, we have to keep it that way because if we change that menu too much, the lads actually don't know what day it is of the week. If we have a Saturday, they actually know it's a Saturday because we put a steak night on. The same menu is available to all on the boat. Oh, yeah. But in the wardroom, it's served up by stewards. Dan, I think you should try this. Uh, no, thanks, sir. Authentic. No, that's what we're just talking Vindaloo about. Vindaloo type. Tonight, the captain's legendary Vindaloo <laughs> is disturbed by some very bad news from the engineers at the back of the boat. OK, the problem we've got at the moment is one of our throttles has caused the, um, the fuses on the electric motor that operates the steam throttles uh, to blow. So we've got a, a stiff throttle, for want of a better term. The throttle controls the steam pressure into the turbine, so the fact that it's stiff makes the engine less responsive. Continuing the many diving and surfacing manoeuvres of eyes only would be unsafe. If anything would happen to the starboard engine, we don't have the port engine to fall back on. Commander Dunn has no choice but to suspend the course and take Triumph back to port. It's a 12-hour limp to fasten. It could take days to locate parts and carry out the repair. It's a severe blow to Jim's carefully planned course and could even lead to its cancellation. Is our priority line. Okay. But commanding a submarine is all about coping with the unexpected, so Jim decides to put the students in charge of sorting it out. All right, thanks. These submarines are getting quite old now. Um, yeah, they're, they're 20 odd years old. So. It's a continuous battle, and they're complex machines. Things get broken.
Back in Faslane, the engineers waste no time getting on with the repairs. We're taking out the old bits right now, as you can see, uh, just being slung out of the submarine. And we'll put some new parts in, fit it back together, uh, test it, relag it, and get back to sea as quickly as we can. With millions of pounds invested in submarine training, the Navy can scarcely afford to postpone the course until next year. The break that's been enforced upon us now with this defect is undoubtedly going to have a, an effect on uh, the next stage of the training. Anxious that his students will lose momentum, Jim has set them to work planning for the next exercise. They will not have a time to settle in, so they need to clutch in quickly and start to prove to me that they can do it. By working round the clock, the repairs are completed in just three days. And Triumph is on her way again. She's heading north to a remote inshore loch for a top secret exercise. An important role for the modern submarine is to launch and recover specialist troops for black ops and reconnaissance. So the student's next task is to plan and execute an action movie style operation, covertly launching two troops of hard men and their gear on and off the submarine. It's going to be a quick, uh, quick day of drills today, uh, getting ready for the uh, troops turning up tomorrow. It'll be a very fast turnaround in confined waters. Students are going to have a lot to think about. For practice today, members of Triumph's crew are playing the role of the specialist troops. <laughs> uh, we're simulating the role of the team that will be with us tomorrow. Um, so that we've got an idea of how many personnel we actually need on the ground and how much equipment will need to be moved and the, just the general dynamics of being in a close confined environment and getting these guys going as they're going to be tomorrow. Tomorrow this would obviously be prop guys, probably a lot bigger than us. <laughs> yeah. A lot more serious and stern looking. These operations sound complicated, actually all we're doing is getting some people in their bags off the submarine and then, uh, and then practicing getting them back on again. Reasonably straightforward. Yeah, three man, four main access hatch, three main engine room hatch, go. But loading and unloading troops in these confined spaces might not prove quite so straightforward. Casey, stretcher, fuel party to the fin. The engine room hatch is now open to that end, the uh, equipment from back off. Boats. The students are about to find out if their carefully scripted plan actually works. As the rehearsal progresses, chaos sets in. The case of getting everyone going the right way. Where is that? Yeah, my memory. The student's carefully prepared script for the day seems to be more amateur dramatics than a polished Hollywood production. Maybe a little rough and ready to start and then honing in for the throughout the afternoon on exactly what it is we're trying to achieve. Jim was hoping to see much better organisation and communication than this. Wrong then, yes? You, one of you should have been on the casing. Because it's a fiasco up there. The whole of today has been a bit of a disaster. That was an appalling display. And not just of you two, everybody. They're unbelievable. It's actually embarrassing. The entire ship's company are up, waiting on you, fanny around. Jim blames their script. That does not work. One read through and you'd have realised that. And clearly none of you have done it. You guys have got to start thinking that, like commanding officers. Three weeks left. Not even that. That's the time you've got to impress me. Get it sorted. The students have a long night ahead, drawing up a much better plan for tomorrow when the real hard men will be coming on board. Day four, the specialist troops are due at 0800 hours, and the perishers are standing by with a revised script that they hope will redeem them. 
But one of the most common phrases used by the Royal Navy is, get ready to wait. Mm. The specialist troops are late. They'll be here at some stage. Within the next 30 minutes, there you go. That's my prediction. What's the time just now? Quarter past, Quarter past eight. eight. Not a chance for half eight. Nine o'clock. <laughs> ten past nine. An hour and ten minutes late. Looks like the troops are inbound. Um, three nine, go. What we should see is them uh, jump out the back. The helos will hover very low over the water. The, the troops will jump out with their boats and then they'll uh, drive their boats uh, around the, the boat and will drag their boats on board. Specialist troops normally work covertly, so we've been asked to shield their faces and much of what they do. Turn that camera off, please. Now they're in the water, it's the students' job to get the men and their boats safely on board and then dive the submarine. Troop, boats, right astern, 500 yards. It means maintaining delicate control of a 5,000-ton vessel with men in the water in close proximity. There's a great deal that could go wrong. Well, clearly, safety of those personnel, uh, you know, we're sat in the water here um, with, uh, with the shaft turning, uh, and the propeller also turning. The key to avoiding disaster, especially with unfamiliar personnel coming on board, is clear communication. Um, the important one's really getting the troops in the right place at the right time, controlling access to and from the casing, and then of course, once they're all done, in a controlled manner, getting the personnel down from the bridge uh, so that we can dive the submarine safely. The troops are swiftly and safely on board. After their farcical rehearsal and Jim's angry words, the students have staged an award-winning performance. Clear of the casing, Roger. Open, one and two main vents. Open, one and two main vents. Lower WT. Speed coming on, 2.2 .2 knots, 9.8 metres, one up. Very good, Kate. Guys, when we go into standby... More importantly, they're starting to understand what Jim is really looking for. It's about command, all right? Not about waiting for someone to tell you what to do, because that person is you. The question now, with so many mistakes already, is whether all the students will survive the final exercises of the first week. HMS Triumph's new throttle has made it possible to rapidly dive and surface the submarine again. All right, on. Give us 27 meters. It means the students can now continue their eyes-only exercises. In the early runs, Jim was helping them along. You're overranging. Overranging, Roger. Stand by, race 323. But this time, they're on their own. They're also facing a new enemy, HMS York, a Type 42 destroyer, which will be teaming up with their old foe, HMS Monmouth. Start the run, start the run, X-ray, Roger. Just One shower. 1,600 yards, 20 plus seconds, a speed check, we'll die! The different heights and speeds of the two ships make the calculations to find the optimum moment to dive harder than ever. Warships that are involved do a maximum of 29 knots whilst they're involved in the exercise. And whilst going from periscope depth down to uh, a duck depth to get under the warships, the submarine will reach 7 knots. So between them, that's a closing speed of 36 knots. And when they're getting into that sort of range, uh, everything happens very quickly. It's going to be a tough test for Oily, the least confident on eyes only. 
Range is 2,300 yards. Range that. 15 minutes, red 4-5. Closer than that. Range is 2,600 yards. Looking for Lizzo. One minute and uh, 10 seconds. Don't mind, Range. So I need to uh, psych myself up a little bit more before I go on the pro scale. By being slightly more shouty, you increase your, increase your work rate. So 4,000 yards, 2 minutes, 20 seconds. 5,600 yards, 1,900 Jeff's yards. had the opposite problem and still needs to slow his frantic performance down. Slow down, don't panic. Wrist tack. English Dan is, as usual, calm and self-assured. Yeah, in the end it went right. The boat was well driven by the guys as well. And uh, it all seemed to fall into place. Yeah, nothing I wanted to say. It was a nice one. OK, you need to continue working on the finessing it now, OK? 1,600 yards, 25 seconds, A speed checkable. Dan! Left hand, right? Filthy's overconfidence can get him into trouble. But this time, he pulls it off. Uh, Stop the run. Actually, every single run today, they've got it pretty much spot on. So, uh, as far as that concerned, uh, it's, it's pretty good today. All round look, raise tap. Like his British namesake, American Dan has a quiet air of competence and confidence. There, there. Failure is not on his agenda as he becomes the last under the spotlight. Look at the is one minute, 30 seconds. Contact is Zig. He's driving right at us, may put me deep. Next event will be milestone all around look. 50 minutes race, 2,600 yards. Looking for one minute, 10 seconds. Milestone all around look. Race attack. He's prided himself on his timings, but this time he's cut it a bit fine. Race me on left hand, race attack. Half hand, the race is 5 0, 10 down, keep 30 metres, red chips down. Oh Jim takes control. On top. It's a close call. But they managed to pass safely underneath the Monmouth. Stop the run. He's realised his mistake. Um, he knew it was close. He just didn't realise how, how close it was. Up to now, Dan's been given some leeway because he's been getting used to British submarine language and tactics. Two zero starboard ATB. But this was a mistake which could have endangered the submarine and lost him his place on the course. But at the end of a busy first week on the Perisher course, all the students have made it through. Uh, there's been some other challenges as well, defects and personal <laughs> issues, which are always good to add uh, a bit of spice and, and let them know what command is all about. It's not all about charging warships. It's about managing your people, leading your team uh, <laughs> to achieve the effective aim. Are you happy? They'll, they'll get pushed over the next two and a half weeks uh, uh, to really push that point home. And if they can do it, they'll be successful. If they can't, they'll leave the boat. Next time. The students risk running aground in dangerously shallow waters. I want to get closer. Hey. I want to get closer to the lighthouse. Why are you still here? Get the take and then get out of here. Fire! Learn how to evade a new enemy up above. We've got a helo searching for us, I'm trying to evade me. They get caught, they will get attacked. Filthy's No Worries command style becomes Jim's big worry. You need to evade, you need to evade. It's emergency stations again for American Dan. We'll be going to 30 meters, carry on. Who forgets he's on a British submarine. Hang on, I'm you see the trawler. Okay. Reverse the plane, reverse the plane. Stupid thing to do. And the parish, of course, claims its first casualty. His career within the submarine service is finished. Oh, whose career? Whose career? Mm, find out. New submarine school continues in tomorrow's 8 o'clock heroes. Next up tonight, though, you voted for them. We simply play them out. CSI Top 10 continues in just a mo as we reach numbers 8 and 7 of the ones chosen by you.